So, the role of the justice in the society is to ensure this. Right? And as we said, it has to be ensured from a family to a family. So, that's the scope of justice. Similarly, if you look at the relationship of human being with the rest of nature, if I recognize this relationship, if I fulfill this relationship, right, and I ensure mutual prosperity, this is Sudarsha. Guruji, just uh, one clarity. Sure. Rest of nature, other than physical facility, what, 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 what are the other rest? See, this is human being. This is rest of nature. <laughs> and this total thing is the nature, right? Nature. Soil, water, plants, animals. The moment a human being comes in this. Rest of nature means minus human in nature. Human is So our relationship with all these units, right? We are calling it rest of nature, right? So this relationship with the rest of nature has to be recognized, has to be fulfilled. Right? Right? And this fulfillment must lead to prosperity of human beings as well as prosperity of the rest of the nature. Suraksha hospital. So, so when you expand this further, this mutual prosperity, what is it mean? Is prosperity in human beings. <coughs> prosperity in human beings. And this legal prosperity would mean prosperity in human beings and Sudarsha of the rest of nature. If you detail this out, it will mean enrichment, protection, and Right, so these three things. So Suraksha of rest of nature would mean enrichment of the nature, rest of nature, protection of rest of nature, and right utilization of rest of nature. For example, if you look at your relationship with the tree, the plants, Right. Ensuring Sudaksha for the plant would mean I ensure right utilization of whatever I get from the plant. I ensure protection of the plant. I ensure <coughs> enrichment of the plant. Right. So I can plant trees. I can protect the trees they are planted. Right. Or these are growing on their own. And I can make the right utilization of the products that is obtained out of the tree. Right? All three are necessary. Yes. Right? So right utilization is necessary, protection is necessary, and enrichment is necessary. And as I was mentioning that the human being is gifted with this possibility of enrichment of nature. Right? You can plant trees, the animals, other animals cannot. Right? So, you are, you know, involved with this capacity to plant trees, right? to protect trees, right? and ensure the right utilization of the trees. If you are doing these three things, this is the Sudaksha of the rest of nature. Then the rest of nature will continue to enrich, right? <coughs> so, you can see when you are interacting with the rest of nature, Two things are essential. One is prosperity in human beings. Second is suraksha of rest of nature, which means enrichment, protection, and right utilization of the rest of nature. So, if we translate the suraksha in English, it, it will mean well-being. Suraksha. 
it is maybe uh, yes, yeah, yeah. peace or harmony. Uh, very, uh, trust. You, uh, trust. Suraksha means trust. If you uh, put a, you know, uh, somewhere near this word, this uh, to uh, preserve. 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 Or just preserve. Yeah. But then preserve has a negative connotation in the sense that you are not allowed even to ensure right utilization. So this, I have purposely not used this word preservation there. Right? Because what we are doing in the name of preservation today, preservation of the forest, we are not allowing the right utilization of it. That is not going to work. I have to take care of the right utilization, I have to take care of the protection, I have to take care of the infringement. Right? And what Jigmaji was telling you know, yesterday and David was telling that when you have given this responsibility to the community, as community forest, it is taken care of better than the other forest, right? Which is taken care of by the deer. Then all these three will be allowed, right? The right utilization, the protection and the enrichment. Then you will take care of it better. Because all three of these, right, right utilization, protection and enrichment, what <coughs> is, which comes first? Right utilization. Right? So this is where you address first. Then this. Then this. And if you don't allow this right utilization, okay, it will not work. The right utilization has to be there, the protection has to be there and the enrichment has to be there. This is the, you know, mutual relationship between human being and rest of nature. It is this right utilization which connects to the prosperity in human being. So this right utilization is one thing which is connecting to the prosperity in human being. And you can see, as far as this rest of nature is concerned, wherever you are, whether you are in city or in village, right, or in the forest, this is something you can immediately start doing. Right utilization, you can immediately start doing. You can see what kind of physical facility that you are using, right. Are you making right utilization of it? Have you designed in a manner that you can ensure right utilization of it? So I was taking the example of that, you know, my friend having that car, city owner. He is having it for 24 hours. He is using it only for one hour. Right? And even then he thinks that he must get a, you know, bigger car. Now the right utilization, is it there, is it not there? Many of the things now, you know, if we have become a part of our house, you can see, for example, sofa. If you have a sofa in your house, right, how many time and how much time do you use in a day? In fact, most of the people don't even sit on the sofa. No? When you are alone, you will sit, you know, lie down in your bed or comfortable <laughs> in your bed. Only when the guest comes, you make it to sit on the sofa. <laughs> but what is the average use? Not even two hours. Okay. And it is available for use all 24 hours. <laughs> so are you making right explanation? No. If you understand this, okay, at least you can think of you know making sofa in such a manner that in the daytime you can use it for 30, in the night time you can use it as a bed. <laughs> so eight hours in the night. So, we'll increase your efficiency at times. <laughs> <laughs> and not very difficult, you know. <laughs> when you come with this idea, you can make such beds. <laughs> like, I went to one of the faculty members in Triple IT, his house. Okay. He has bought such a soap oil. It is available in the market. 
you can unfold it and it becomes a bed, double bed. You fold it, it becomes a sofa. Right? So if you have this sense of responsibility of right utilization, you can, you know, immediately multiply it eight times, right? Instead of using it one hour in a day, you are now using it eight hours plus one hour, that is nine hours a day. Many of the clothes, you know, you have bought, you are not even wearing them, right? That is why you don't know how many pairs of clothes you have, right? That means, are you ensuring right utilization? Not ensuring right utilization. Similarly, you watch this, you know. Many of the gadgets that you have bought, I mean, out of the fashion, every house in nowadays will have a one showcase and made of glass. And then you put a number of things there which you are never using. <laughs> <laughs> so it is occupying the place, right? And because it is made of glass, it is a big problem for the children to play. So every time they try to play, you you know make them mourn, you know, say, don't do this, you know, you break the glass. <laughs> so are they creating convenience or inconvenience? And all these things, you know, nowadays this dining table has come. You know, it will occupy another place, <laughs> big place, one round chair, you know, a round table and then many chairs, right? Twice in a day you use, right? Just see. One hour, twenty-four hours you are occupying the place. Startups come some. Well, see, what you are doing, you are confusing the issue of respect with the physical facility. So you are not you know, ensuring the right utilization. You could very comfortably sit on the ground, eat, right? And make use of that space throughout the day. Now, out of this belief that if you have a dining table, your status will go high. Right? I think I should not describe all this because now it will become very difficult for you to keep anything in your house. <laughs> <laughs> so, the first thing is the right utilization, second is the protection, the protection, third is the enrichment. This everybody can do, whether in city or village. This also, you know, there is enough scope for protection. Right? We'll have to see whether we have this scope you know, to do it or we don't have this scope to do it. But you will see, it is not all that difficult also. For example, if you take people in this Gedu College, right? How much land we have? Many people don't even know how many <laughs> This is 200 plus, right? Acre of land. How many trees can you plant? So if you start looking at it, you have enough scope for the enrichment of the rest of nature. Right? So we can plant out of trees you know, the timber trees, the fruit trees and all these things, right? So, we have a scope. Similarly, there is enough scope. I keep telling that in India, almost, you know, something like 10,000 kilometers of railway line is there. And on both sides of the railway line, you have some 20 meters of <coughs> land which is remaining vacant and you cannot use it, right? Just imagine how much, you know, land it is there. Right. How many trees can you plant? So, there is a lot of scope everywhere. But it might be possible that you don't have the scope for enrichment. You know. But this right utilization is always there. Protection is always there. Okay. You can do that you know, for the rest of the nature. So, this is justice and selection. Now, you can see if you ensure justice, it will lead to fearlessness, right? It will ensure suraksha, it will lead to coexistence in nature. Right? 
So justice leads to fearlessness, that's what I have written. And suraksha leads to coexistence in nature. So with this justice and suraksha, we can take care of this human goal of fearlessness and we can take care of this coexistence in nature in existence. So, this is how we define justice and suraksha. I will just briefly define these two things, you know, the exchange and the storage. Exchange and storage are defined. Okay. Exchange is exchanging of things which we have produced. Right. After the fulfillment of our need, we exchange with others with a view of mutual fulfillment, not with a view of exploitation. Right. This is exchange. And then, you know, after the fulfillment of need and after the exchange, Whatever is left, okay, we are you know, storing it, saving it right, with a view of mutual fulfillment and not with a view of exploitation. If this happens, right, then it will lead to number one, prosperity and number two, fearlessness. On the other hand, if you do it with a view of exploitation, okay, this exchange and storage, then it leads to fear, fear of getting exploited and it will also lead to deprivation and that is what is happening today. That major problem okay, is caused by this exchange and storage okay, which is done with a view of exploitation. In fact, what you call as trade and commerce today, right, is creating a huge problem. So much so that lot of, you know, uh, physical things, okay, lot of produce is going wastage, okay, all it is, you know, very intense, you know, purposefully wasted okay, in order to increase the price. Okay. 
So it seems that lot of wheat, lot of butter, you know, all this is dumped into the sea. It creates scarcity. And therefore, you know, raise the price. So it is leading to deprivation. It is leading to fear. In fact, today when you go to the market, right? What is your feeling? Fearlessness or fear? Fear. Fear of being exploited. Fear of being cheated, right? So it has become one big problem, right? <coughs> so if you look, look at it in the right sense, the exchange would mean exchange of things which we have produced with a view of mutual fulfillment. Similarly, the <coughs> would mean, you know, fulfilling one's need, you know, on the basis of what we have produced, then exchanging it with others for mutual fulfillment, and whatever is remaining, <coughs> storing that for the purpose of mutual fulfillment, as and when it is required, can be used for mutual fulfillment. So this is the meaning of exchange and storage. And we said that if exchange and storage is done in this sense, then it will lead to prosperity, it will lead to fearlessness. If it is done with exploitation, it will lead to otherwise, right? The deprivation and the fear. So now we can see, we can go back and see that if we ensure these five dimensions, which we have expanded here, then these four human goals can be achieved, can be fulfilled. Right? So these are the five essential dimensions of human system by which this four human goal can be ensured, can be fulfilled. <coughs> so now you can see that this is what is desirable for you as human being, right? living in society. This is what we need to do as five dimensions of this human system in order to ensure this okay, fulfillment of this human goal. And now you can see if this is the case, okay, then we would like to ensure this starting from the family order. One family order. <coughs> what do you think? You would like to ensure this order right from family order to whole family order, or would like to stop in between? And if you do this, okay, this is what is called as universal human order. So now you can ask yourself whether this universal human order is desirable for you or not desirable for you. I will remove this, right? So that is what we want to ensure, right? As harmony in society. We want to ensure universal human order, that is ensuring fulfillment of these four human goals through these five dimension of human system, starting from family order to world family order. Right? 
it. You want this or you want to stop anywhere in between? <coughs> you want to ensure this, this universal model. <coughs> in fact, if you look at this issue of relationship, the smallest unit where this can be worked out is the family. Right? If you look at this universal human order, the smallest level at which it can be worked out okay, with all these five dimensions is a village or a community. Right? It will start with the family. Right? The family will have to ensure all this. But then when you talk about things like exchange and storage, right? it has to do with another you know, other families, okay? group of families. So the smallest unit for this is a village or a community right? to ensure universal human order. The smallest unit for that relationship is the family. So this is what we desire as human beings, you know, to ensure harmony in society. Identification of these four human goals and fulfillment of these four human goals right, with these five dimensions of human system, starting <coughs> from family order to world family order. This is what is <coughs> required, needed to be done. Is it nicely acceptable to you? Or do you think something is there which is not desirable, right? Which is not natural for you? I have just one clarity to seek. Uh, we always have nature slash existence. Is there any con connotation why you use this to Is it being used synonymously or is there some like Suraksha, uh, some connotation? Yeah, there is some connotation. Now when we talk about nature, okay, and then the existence, we will see the difference. <laughs> We will see what is the meaning of existence. We will see what is the meaning of existence. And then we can see what is the difference between the two. I like to go with you. We have reached on the third level only. Mine is moving past <laughs> so you can see whether this okay, is something which is natural for you okay, or is there anything which is not natural, which is not naturally acceptable to you. Very much so very much acceptable. Right? Now you can see, till now what we have been talking about is the harmony in the cell, then harmony in family, and harmony in society. And the basis of our exploration was, you know, whether these are naturally acceptable to us, not naturally acceptable to us. Right? So we have been able to, you know, explore, investigate into this, you know, Harmony in the human being, harmony in family, harmony in society on the basis of our natural acceptance. So this is what is naturally acceptable to us. Now the next question we want to you know, address ourselves to is that though we want to have this, right, is it possible to ensure this in the given nature in the existence? Or is it that we want to do this as a human being, but the design of the nature is not such, right? Or the design of the existence is not, you know, favorable to this, then it will not be possible. Right? So what we want to study into now is to look into this harmony in nature and harmony in existence. And see 
whether this is possible in the given design of the nature or not. Whether this is possible in the given nature and existence or not. Right? And similarly, whether it is possible for me to understand the human being and the self and be in harmony right? in this nature, in this existence or not. 